Okay, guys. So, like I said earlier, we do a class on back control. I took this class from Dennis because he got sick. Um, and we changed slightly the theme so if you didn't catch it, like it, it, the name was a little bit different. It was like back top lock or some rear top lock stuff. And we just do general back control stuff and it's labeled for all um, levels. So we keep it fairly basic with some little details that, that um, should also hopefully be new and helpful for advanced guys, but it is pretty uh, basic in general. So the main thing we're looking at, um, there is, we start here, we look first at the rear naked choke finish, and then at the general control, like how you want to uh, position your body, and then we look a little bit on the overhook side, and if we have time left, we look on the underhook side as well. Okay. But that's the general um, structure of the class that we're going to have. Okay. And yeah, the first thing we do, is we, we just start, like, like I always say, um, credits to Ryan Hall, we start with the, with the last piece first, right? So the last piece, like in general, is always the rear naked choke. And, um, there are a few things we want to take care of when we go for the rear naked choke. Uh, one thing is, and that's, that's actually a detail from Gordon Ryan, is like you don't want to go straight away here, because then oftentimes there's a lot of space and it's easier for him to, to catch my hand. Right? It's, it's harder to punch too. But if you want to punch to the side and then up, you get a much tighter fit. So you want to bring your, your elbow right in front of his chin. Right? But you don't do it by like sliding in like this. You want to punch to the side and up. Right? And it, we look at the same thing later from like more realistic position. This is more or less like an artificial position. You can't find yourself here, but oftentimes it's like either EB, EBI overtime right? or you're drilling right? most of the time. And in, in regular um, action, you usually find yourself on one side, either because he wants to go on the side or I. Right. He can usually ch uh, choose the side, so you have to develop both sides. Right? He, he can, because he has base, I don't have much base, only my butt is on the mat, and my feet may be here if I'm lucky. But I can't really, I can throw my weight here, but if he pushes to the other side, I can't really get in there, I have to go. Right? So, but just to start, we go into this um, like neutral kind of EBI overtime style position. Right? We don't yet worry too much about body position, we just start with the choke, okay? very simple. So for the choke, you punch to the side and then up. And you want to reach with this hand as deep as you can behind his neck. And you want to grab his neck and basically like right at the actual back of his neck. Okay. The, the benefit of this grip, instead of having his shoulder, is like it can't be pulled off easily. This one, you can pull off pretty easily. If I'm at the back of his neck, it's kind of hard, like especially if my head is here, of course. But even without my head, it's a good angle for him to get. Right? So you can't get it, but it's like takes a lot of time. If my head is here, now it's even, nah, even harder, right? Even without, and this hand is still there. Okay. So that's the first thing we do. We just start from here. No grip fighting and nothing. We do this later. So we punch to the side, and then behind his neck, and you get this false grip. Right? Like when you were in the helo classes, like mine or probably others too, you use this false grip to, hit, to uh, cup the heel so he can't run away. It's the same false grip behind his neck here, right? And bring our head here to cover. Um, if you're a beginner, you know, just be aware, you never want to reach here because you can grab your hand, it's like annoying to get it back. So you slide right behind his neck, right? You slide behind his head here, nice and tight, and catch your, uh, your tricep idea. You want to go as deep as you can behind your tricep and towards your shoulder, right? Really nice and deep. And then I like to, like, the, the, you can go right away, finish to this side, which is very, the, the common one. I like to first go here and hide this elbow. Because sometimes if the guy is really strong, or the girl, like, you, you lock it and you right away push on your elbow, right? And this, this is super annoying. And some people are really looking for this. So right away, you're like, here you go, and they instantly do this, and it's super annoying. So when you do this and you punch it over here, I'm hiding this elbow. You see, this elbow's not here. It's like behind the shoulder. And then from here, you could finish in this direction, or the stronger direction is the other one. So I press my, my elbow to his chest and go in this direction, right? so the, the more uh, common way, like this. Okay? And you want to keep everything nice and tight. Before you go for the finish, punch too deep. And get your elbows together. Like you want to squeeze the elbows together as much as you can, right? Um, my elbow press onto his chest and then makes a circle like this. You don't need much motion. It should be very tight and there should be very little motion. Okay, so, um, okay that's it for the start. This everyone should do this. If you're a beginner, that's like your main task, right? If you're advanced, you can also, you might know this already, but if not, it's, it's good to know. You can also do other finishes. You can go with one arm, right, if you behind here, and maybe this arm, he holds it or something, it's, it's just annoying. And just also like a placeholder, until you get this arm, why not choke him already, right, it, it doesn't cost too much. So you draw this elbow back already, and just choke him a little bit. You might get the tab from here, 
or if not, you just keep him busy. Right? So I'm keeping busy here, I can fight for this arm, then when I get it, it's easier to get this in. Okay? So this is like another one. You can finish actually with one arm. You now, of course, in this position, you don't have much control here, but you can generally do it. And the other one is to go over his chin. Right? In competitions these days, you don't see often people like, most of the time they skip this part, right? getting under the chin. There's a lot of cool techniques you can do to get under the chin. I do them in training too, you know? but in competition, if you have, as long as your arms are long enough to reach to his far shoulder and your elbows in front, you're good. You can go through the chin. You don't have to um, get under the chin. This is totally fine. You can go from here. Do the same thing. And you press your elbow really strong in his chest. You want to be as low as possible. And because you're choking from the side, the chin doesn't do much. Unless he has like a gigantic super chin, which basically no one has, right? Like, it has to be wide. You can, you can choke through it, right? So it's, it's not a, a, a good defense. If you, if you shrug the shoulder also, which you should do, it's a little bit harder, but you can still do it. Right? If you're here and you really press down with this elbow, so elbow presses down, and then you do the same finish. Right? So you go down here, and then you compress. It takes a little bit longer, it takes more effort, but you can totally do this. Right? So if you're already familiar with the basic finish and you're like bored, you're like, I want to do something different, try this one out. Okay? But for the beginners, for sure, try the basic finish first. So you push to the side, false grip, Slide behind, so he never sees his hand like a ninja, right? It's like ninja never gets seen. It's like here, boom, it's gone. You're in here, right? Bring it over to one side, hide your elbow, and then keep it nice and tight, and you squeeze to this side. Okay? And second option, you hear basically the same thing, just once you hear, you already start choking. So why not, right? You can choke in here, or you can at least make it harder for him to defend, and then you get your choke arm in, and then you do the same thing, right? It's just like a placeholder, plus um, you can do the actual one arm choke. And the last one we do is like his chin is in, right? Either you're annoyed, you don't want to dig, it's too hard, whatever the case may be, right? Um, you just go deep, right? The, the important part is you see how my shoulder drops forward, so I have enough reach. But right? if I'm just parallel with him, it's like hard to reach here. It's like shit, I can't get it. But my shoulder comes forward, kind of like when you reach for a dars, like a dars choke, you, like you come a little bit around the corner without going all the way over here, because then of course it's open. Right? Your head stays on the side, but you reach around like this really deep. And then you connect your, your head, and you really want to focus on pressing this elbow into his chest. So it shouldn't be here, then I'm squeezing his face. It can also be annoying, but probably can't choke him out. I'm going to go really low, like press it in here, right? Like this, bring one side, bring the other. And then you have to be a little bit more patient here, right? It could take a little bit, okay? but you will get it. Okay? Any questions? Right. And switch, like keep switching, because if you choke someone, like especially if you're a beginner, you're not used to this, you choke someone like eight times in a row, it might come really quick, you can't really test it, because you just start and they're like already, oh shit, okay. You want to get some really feedback. Right? Yeah. One, two. Okay. So, from what I've seen, everyone got it in the end. I hope at least no one screamed, there was no one left to give me for help. Um, like if you need help, always scream because maybe I miss you, right? Always like, you know, raise your hand and stuff. Um, there are additional things you can do to make the, the choke more powerful, but I'm just trying to focus on the most important stuff so I'm not overloading you, right? But one thing that also is, is a nice addition is if you um, basically stick your chest out, right? Like you make a really good posture, which like bends him, like I force him into this like stretch position, which we come back to um, right after this. Right? We want to most times stretch it. So if I'm like bent over like this, I'm nice and tight, but he's also nice and tight, right? And if I'm like stretching like this, it, it opens his neck, right? So it's more accessible here. Uh, I'm pushing my chest into the back of his, uh, the back of his back. <laughs> and it's into his back, his upper back, okay? And then it's like, it's like, uh, I get better access and it's a little bit more powerful, right? And there are other things too that you can do, but this is really the, the most important thing. Um, some people asked about, um, if you like, maybe you feel like sometimes you, you're so deep that you can't grab the neck here, right? You can, of course, if you rotate it. If I'm feeling like I'm so deep with my arm that I can't grab his neck, I can, of course, also grab his shoulder. It's totally fine to do this. Just be extra aware that he doesn't catch it, right? You have to be extra forward with your head and fight here. It's, it's, it's not wrong or, you know, it's not like a total game changer. It's just a little bit more helpful if you have his neck here. You know, it's hard for him to remove. It's just a little bit. Here and there, it might make a difference, you know, every now and again. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's the, the main thing. Also, with the chin in, 
you have to be a little bit more patient, right? It takes a little bit longer. Don't blow your arms out. Like in all chokes, always go like maybe, I don't know, like 80%, whatever feels like you could hold it for a minute or two, right? Because this can take like sometimes 20 seconds or so. Like, you know, sometimes it's quick. It doesn't have to be 20 seconds, but you want to at least hold it for 20 seconds. And the good thing is if you have a good position, you don't have to hurry here, right? You don't have to hurry. You just squeeze as much as you can hold for a while, and you don't have to hurry. The only thing that he could do is reach back and get to catch my arm, right? So also in action, if you actually do re ankle chokes in action with someone, I'm always having my eyes closed on the back. Always have my eyes closed and be like this. Now it looks kind of weird, but people will, they, they're not even, they don't, bad, they have no bad intentions, but they try to reach your hands and they will stick your eyes on if you want it or not, right? Or if they want it or not. So you want to be here and you have your eyes closed and you will come back and try to catch your hands. So you always like this, always keep your eyes closed, right? <laughs> because it happens, it happens all the time. And if you can catch my hand, it's a legit defense, right? He can pull it back out, and he's in a much better position now, right? But um, it's, it's avoidable. If I'm really deep here, my head is in, right? I'm like this, and I, it's hard for him to get it because my chin is, is closing the way. If I'm open like this, it's super easy, right? Or like, um, it's, you know, it used to be like the case 10, 5, 10 years ago. People did this a lot. And in, in, in MMA, you sometimes see it because it's so hard with the gloves. Sometimes the angle is not right. It's so hard to get the gloves, and you have to do this, right? And then they can grab your hand, pull it down, it's super annoying because now you have to get this arm back, right? And you don't want to release this arm. But sometimes you can do one, one arm choke, but sometimes you have to come back and get the arm. So just be aware of this. In grappling, this is basically unacceptable. It should only happen if it happens in MMA because it's really hard with the gloves. Unless you have like mutant hands, okay, then I'm sorry. I don't want to offend you, but most people should easily get in here, right? Um, okay, that's that part. The next part uh, we're looking at is how we want to position our body. And like a, a few main points is we want to use our elbows and our knees to control most of them, right? So our hands and feet, they have some freedom, especially the hands are important because we want to grip fight. And we don't want to have to do like this, hold him all the time, and now I have no option to grip fight. I can't do anything. And if I release here, he's like instantly have, has freedom to rotate and move around, right? which is horrible. But if my elbow is clamping here, but one elbow is in front of his shoulder, and one, is, uh, one arm or elbow is here underneath his shoulder, right? and they clamp in here like this, so I have some freedom here. If he tries to rotate this way, this elbow here is holding him, but it's really hard for him to rotate this way. And this, like, underhook kind of thing, holds him from going this direction, right? So I have post, post strap. And you can play with strap like this. Of course, your hooks play a role too, but even without hooks, it should be hard for him to move either way, right? Like, either way should be hard. And you have some option here to grip fight, you know, without, like, if I'm like this, it's like, you know, out in a few seconds. But if I have good, good elbow and uh, knee alignment, I'm good. Especially the knees too, um, you want to pinch them together. Like most people, they're so focused on the hooks and you think the hooks are like, basically like the lahiva hooks or something, or butterfly hooks. And you want to get like, this most for beginners of course, uh, but you sometimes think they have to connect with him, right? But the hooks, in, that, that's not really what makes the hooks. The hooks are the blocks of his, of his thigh, right? So if I have the, the, the block here and if he tries to turn this direction, it's really hard because there's a block. Right? That's what the hook does. It's not so much that I'm actually hooking his thigh here, right? It's just like being in here. And, and this gets stronger if my knees draw together. Like it pinches his ribs, but right? it can be quite uncomfortable if you have strong legs. So you pinch your, your legs together and bring the hook strong inside, like the grips back here more, right? So what you do is like uh, bring the legs together and then back here, right? So together and back here. Very similar to a close guard, right? If you think about a close guard, um, no. You want to do the same thing. Like, this is really bad close cut because my legs are you know, wobbling around. I want to bring my knees together and then down. And now it's really tight. But right? now if I move, it can move too, right? But if it's like this, I try to move him and nothing happens. But if they're like nice and tight, I can move him too. So it's a very similar concept. You want to have like as much connection to him as possible. Always when you do the attacker, you want like maximum connection, right? So you pinch your knees like this and draw your heels back. And your elbows, Pinching in and in and down also, right? So both go in and down. Legs and also down. Like this. And now you're much freer, right? It takes some habit, some habit to get into it, but um, some practice to get the habit, what one can say. But then uh, you can be much freer here and you can grip fight a little bit without losing them instantly, right? So that's the, the one thing. The other is grips. If you make your grips, you have a choice of different grips, but all of them, you want them as high as possible. If I can get them here, that's idea. Of course, it's not. You usually you know, resist that. But this is the grip I want because now the choke is right there. Right? This is the idea. So if you do, if you do EBI overtime tournaments, 
and you have bad referees who don't check this, who just start here. And they say go, and you're like, oh, I got it, man. It's totally not fair. So good overtime referee should always put you here on the sternum. And then it's kind of fair because I'm not too low, not too high. Right? But if you start up here, it's super easy to get. Right? Um, so as an attacker, generally, you always want high hands. Okay? Um, low hands gives him more rotation. Like this, that what I just showed, controlling his rotation, it's much better when I'm high with my hands, like this, right? than when I'm low. Now it's much harder to pinch my elbows. He can both hit more. Yeah? The only advantage this has is later when we go into arm traps, if he put, puts my hand down, my, my hands down, I can get easier access to his hands for uh, arm traps. That's the main thing. So he's always like, I want to either have low hands and trap his arms, or high hands and go for the choke. Okay? So that's always what we're playing. Um, we don't do too much arm trapping now, but if you're interested, we can later discuss it on the, on the um, open mat time. And uh, what else? Uh, yeah, that's, that's the main thing. Okay? So squeeze your knees, draw back your feet, squeeze your shoulders, sorry, and draw back your um, elbows. Sorry, I'm happy. And then from here, you already should feel like you have good control. And in, generally, in general, you always want to stretch him a little. If he feels relaxed and he can bend forward, but that makes it hard. He can grab your feet. He can, uh, he can just tuck his chin really well and, and bring his shoulders up. It's really hard to get here, right? You always want to extend him, right? You always want to do like this extension. It makes it so uncomfortable for him. Now he tries to do the same thing. Now it's super hard, right? And I can get the choke much easier than if, if everything's wobbly here. It's like wobbly like this. I'm like, oh, shit. Keep the choke. Keep the choke. Right? It doesn't happen. But if I'm here, now everything's nice and tight. You feel like almost like one unit. He tries to move around, right? It's much easier to get your choke to get to the finish. And we still do it from this position for now, and then we go, it's still preparation, and then we go actually to the side and do it like more real life scenario, okay? But this will happen too to you, but most of the time you will be on one side, okay? Again, knees in, heels back, elbows in, back, right? Nice and tight here. We could play with different grips too. Um, I can show this later on Ultimate if you want. Gable grip is fantastic. I love the Gable grip here. And this pack grip is fantastic. There's a lot of good options. But for now, you can just take the basic, um, Grip like this, like like guillotine grip or Rinnek, um, back control grip that you're probably used to. And if you want, the advanced guys can take gable grip like this because you can draw it really high. It's really strong, but it has much better connection. Okay, like this. And then play with this stretching. Right, so you're basically um, doing this motion, right? like sticking the chest out like a proud chicken, okay? like proud chicken motion, or like Superman, Superman motion, right? Mighty Mouse, like this. It's super uncomfortable for him. It feels super weird. If he tries to move here, it feels, it feels stupid. And it's strong. If he tries to um, get forward, like bend back, it's not easy. Right? And the more he does it, the, the more pressure I can get to get. Of course, there are hands in between stuff, I know. But um, just for now, just play with this. That's just the connection, especially your knees, your elbows. They do most of the work and stretch them out. Um, and high hands. Like you also have high hands. Any questions? Done. One, two. Yeah, I think almost everyone got it. Okay. Everyone did that thing. Um, so one additional fact, I got some questions, um, which is it's a good point that I didn't mention. Or like two points, actually. So one is like fairly basic. I think everyone got it. But just to make sure that, that it's, uh, it's clear, you always want to have your head on the opposite side of your choke arm, right? So my choke arm is here, my head is here, right? So the, I'm basically squeezing his head in between, like this, right? Every time I go over here with my arm and head on the same side, now it's really loose over there, right? It's like most of you notice, but just to make sure. Always be aware that your head is on the opposite side of the choke arm. Um, and the other thing is, we, we, we talked about the rotational direction, right? So you can rotate in those directions, but there are other directions. And he can slip down and, and push up, right? So if I have loose grip, he can just slip down. I slip down, slip down, and go out this direction. Or the other one, is if, I, uh, if he pushes into me and slides out to the top, right? Slide, 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 he can go out here, right? Those are valid options. And you don't have to do anything extra. Right, your grips help you because if you see, this is under him, like an underhook, and this is like over him, kind of like an overhook type thing. Right? So this one prevents him from sliding down. If he tries to slide down, right, this one alone is pretty strong. Right? This, of course, helps. Right? If I hold it, I won't do this. But just to demonstrate, like, even this without legs, like, it, it, he could turn with this, right? if I'm demonstrating like this. But 
This alone is, makes it pretty hard for him to go out, especially if I have this one to back up. Okay? And if I'm already nice and tight here and he slides down like this, he slides right into the chop. It's, it's very hard to slide down and still keep, like if I'm tight here on his chest and he slides, right, he's basically like going into the chop and I just have to punch him. Like, if he's too low, of course, if he manages to get too low, then the angle for the choke is weird, right? You have to re reset. You either want to get like Kimura grip, pull him back or something, or most of the time we take an angle, and now we're in a good, in a good position to trap arms. Every time he's low on our body, trapping arms is so much easier. But right? if he's high on our body, it's so hard to trap arms, right? You need to be great spec, but it doesn't make sense. But if he's low on our body, we can trap arms, okay? So just keep this in mind. And the same thing applies for the other direction. This, this arm here, in this case, like whatever arm is on top, prevents him from coming on top. If he pushes into me and tries to slide on top of me, this arm prevents it, right? Like here's a, there's a physical block here. He tries to go over it, it's not possible. There's, there's arm in the way. But if he comes too high, you can feel this stuff, you can reset, maybe you can't get the ball to slash, you're like, okay. Push, okay. But you can do stuff to bring him back down, but ideally you don't need it because your grips are nice and tight, right? That's why those elbows, they, they can't be loose here because then you can slide all sorts of ways. If this is tight, this is tight, now he tries to slide either way, even without hands, like slide down, like really, really slide down hard mark. Yeah, Tr really try to push up. I don't have to do too much. No. Not that it could never happen, of course he can grip fights and get my grips out of the way, then he can do it. But it's, it's totally realistic, but it shouldn't happen when I have good control. That's what I'm trying to say, okay? Um, okay, next thing we look at is, you know, like I said, usually we pick a side. Either he does it or I do it, right? Um, if he's really far forward already, you know, then it's kind of hard to get him back sometimes, but then we already fucked up, right? And you can still do stuff from here, but ideally, you don't want to happen. You see, my, my head is out of alignment, everything sucks from here, right? So that's why I said you always want to stretch him, right? So if he tries to go forward here, it should be really hard for him to go forward. Right? It's not, not an easy task. Um, of, of course, it depends on the entry, how do you get to the back, right? Sometimes you already have him stretched. Like we looked at earlier, with like if you come from a truck or bowler position, you often use this one and you already stretch him open, right? So he's stretched from the beginning. Right? But there are other back takes where he's like closed up and then it's harder to open up. Okay? It depends on the context. But you always ideally want to stretch him out. Okay? And if someone is to choose its side, if we have a battle here like an EBI overtime, he's usually dictating where we go. Because he has the more base to the side, right? In those directions. I only have my butt, you know? It doesn't have much power to push me either side. And maybe these feet in the middle, which is a very narrow base here. But he has those feet on the floor and he can push strong to either side. So if I want to go here and lean towards this way, and he says we go there, it's super hard to win this battle. So I have to usually, you know, go wherever he is serving. Unless he's sleeping, he doesn't do anything. I'm like, okay, let's take this side. But I can pick whichever I want. But it's not if you land here. Again, context matters. Sometimes you get an entry and you already land on one side, right? That, that's that. Um, but even there, he can switch sides better than you do, right? So if I'm here and he absolutely wants to go on the other side, use his foot as base and come over, right? He can use the use big take where we go. I can do things, I can take hooks out and try this and make it harder for him, but also oh, it opens up. Um, I have to open up. I lose some, some control, right? So generally, he can dictate where we go, okay? And we have those two sides. Um, as you know, most of you know, um, they're not the same because one has my control arm on the bottom, this underhook arm basically, and this choke arm on the top, and on the other side is exactly the opposite. But they're not symmetrical, they play a little bit different. Okay? We mostly for now focus on the open side, both are valid. It used to be that this is the strong side on the choke arm and this is the weak side like many, many years ago. But these days it's kind of switched almost because many people like including Gordon Ryan and many um, good back control players go to this like traditionally weak side. So many play here because the, the main reason is we have more options to attack and we can easier trap arms, right? It's much easier from this angle to trap arms than on the other side, okay? Um, but we actually go on the other side for two reasons. Uh, first is many defenders go here because they know that these days everyone plays this side strong and they neglect this side. And also you wanna have, like I said, both sides and you probably did this more than that, so I hope I can give you more helpful details over there than there. Right? But if you want to learn the other side, you can come to open mat, ask me, I'll show you everything on the other side. So we go on this overhook side, or control, um, choke arm side. Okay? And like I said, this one is more limited. We can't uh, do much beside the, the rear choke, but the rear choke is really nice here, because later we have a free arm here, we can lock the choke, which on the other side is harder. Okay? And the most important point is first, 
we just look at control. So when I'm over here, I do the same thing we did before. Right? My knees and my elbows do, do a good job of pinching together and drawing him back so he can move. And also you want to get this stretch. Right? The stretch makes it much harder for him to rotate in either direction. Okay? It's, it's much harder than when I'm... Even if I'm squeezing in, I can squeeze and be tight here, but you see how it can turn? That, that's like legit, I'm not letting him turn here. Right? I'm squeezing really as hard as I can here, and he turns, and it, this happens. And people who are good with, with escapes, they do this to you. And you can mitigate this by using your top shoulder behind his shoulder. Right? So I push my shoulder behind his shoulder and my elbow against his foot. Uh, this one draws back, and this shoulder punches forward. So how do we best show it? Yeah, let's try it just in here. Um, so if he wants to go there, his body has to rotate like this, right? So if I push against this shoulder and draw here, I do the opposite, and now he can't rotate. So when I'm here, I punch my shoulder forward and draw this elbow back. And now if he does it, it's much harder, right? It's much, I, I counter-rotate him, okay? Um, that's really important on this side. Also, if you stretch him, it's already hard. Like, do this already to some degree, right? If I just do the thing I showed before where you pop, pop out your chest and stretch him like this, it's more uncomfortable for him, obviously, but also he's much more connected to me. If now he does it, it's hard. If then I focus also on punching the shoulder and using my elbow, it's super hard for him, right? And again, we want the high hands, right? It's not always easy. He will have hands here. He tries to pull us down, right? But we want to go as high as we can with either the regular grip here, the, this um, ball and socket type grip, or I like the gable grip here, right? The gable grip gives you a lot of power because you basically do like a, a bicep curl with this one. It's really strong, right? And you draw this one nice and high up. And you have two hooks. With the regular grip, you only have one hook hand. The other is just round. Okay? And here you have two hooks from both sides. So it's a little bit stronger, okay? this one. And you can go higher. But either one's fine. Okay? So one last time. So with here, right? he usually, usually chooses the side. If not, for this case, we just choose the side. We fall over here. We do everything as we did before. Like we have nice tight knees, nice tight elbows, and we stretch it right? like this. Try to get high, um, high head. For now, for the first part, you can just go to your regular rear naked choke and finish it from just the same you did before. Right? And then we go into more uh, grip fighting afterwards. But for now, we just have a nice high uh, control here. And then just slide it in. Do the same as before. Bring your head over it. This hand is free. It slides behind. You do the same finish you did before. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the most part. Any questions or anyone want to see it again? Right, one, two. Okay, it's looking good. Everything I see looks good. Um, remember the things we, we looked at earlier, right? When you're here, um, one problem is that you can't get the angle. You're like, I can't get the proper angle. You want to be sideways and up, right? This is like credit to Gordon Ryan, he figured this out, or at least he, he's the only one I've seen uh, teach it. Like, you want to go sideways and up, right? If I try to go down, like, bring my hand right away behind his neck, you see there's a lot of space here, and it feels weird. I don't have the space to come up. But if I punch sideways, basically, um, what I'm doing is, like, I'm punching my um, bicep into his neck, like this, and then I fold it in, right? And then if you do it quickly later, it looks almost like an uppercut. It kind of feels like an uppercut, but it's, like, sideways and up. And that's what you want to do. If I'm like here and I try to go behind him, you see the space here? It's like really hard to get out. But if I go like this first and then that, that's ideal. And even better is if you're here, you're already like this, right? You're, if your grip is so tight that already my bicep and the inside of my elbow is next to his neck, right? Because then I just have to grip and I'm, I'm done, right? You, of course, you can always get this, but this is like, is your goal, right? When you have this, you constantly want to make it miserable for him, for him. Like always stretch him here and walk your hands up, up. And he will pull on your hands, right? But this is already pretty miserable. I mean, if you feel you can go through, you go through. And if he grabs your arm, like, um, it would be better for him to, to grab my wrist, which we go over next. But if he just grabs your arm, you can always, like, either do the punch I showed, or if he's, like, much stronger than you, then maybe you feel like you can't punch, you do, like, a spider walk, right? Like, you walk with your fingers, like you do for the mount. If you get the arms up in mount, right? Most of you probably know this. If you try to get arms up here, right, it's really hard to just do it in the air. But if I use the spider walk, I have so much more strength, right? Just like very simplified now, but it's the basic same motion. We're here, and he grabs my arms here, but, but, but my wrist is safe. Let's say I, I, my wrist, you couldn't get it. Then I just walk, 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 walk sideways as much as possible. Ideally, his neck is bent a little bit. You see this? It's not like relaxed. I'm walking so much that his neck is bent, and then I punch it too. And then I get a beautiful finish. Okay? 
And everything else is the same with the finish and stuff. And, and like I said, the biggest problem here that some of you experience also, which is good, because it happens, is people will turn, turn belly up basically, right? Like this. And you, you to, to uh, negate this, you have to stretch him and push. Uh, the most important is like pushing with this uh, back shoulder then. And also this helps drawing with the elbow back. But this shoulder is super powerful. Even if I just do the shoulder with like nothing else, not ideal, but if he tries to rotate here, it's not easy, right? This shoulder here is super powerful. And if I stretch him and to the elbow and to the shoulder, then it's like really hard like, to get up. Okay, so far, so good. Next thing is we, we go into actual more grip fighting. Because of course, usually he doesn't let me just go up here. But I will try, I will always try to stretch him, work my way up, and it's pretty exhausting for him. But once he catches your, the top of your hand here, that's annoying because now he can't punch. You can't spider walk anymore, and you can't punch through. It's really hard. So you could either remove the arm and try it again, which sounds pretty trivial, but it actually works surprisingly often, right? Because they're here like, oh, I got it. And you just do it, and you do it again and again. It's, it's pretty tiring for him, right? But if he's just really good with this, and you can't get it, you have a few other options, okay? So one is you do, use this grip here where you grab his knuckles and have him down here, and you have two options to catch his hand, to trap his hand. One is a little bit harder, is you push him down, and you come over with the foot, like in front of your own uh, arm, and then you have to pull out your arm without losing his arm, right? So you want to be nice and tight to pull your arm out, and then you have him here. And then you can actually lock, either lock your arms or bring him behind the back. I personally uh, lock down, lock the legs. I personally prefer to bring the second foot on. And this, right? this is tighter. Um, the other one is from Ryan Hall, which I really like. It's like when I try to push him down, but he resisted and he's really strong, I can't get him down. But he has to pull up, right? The opposite to down is up. So if he comes up, I fold him behind his back and my, my um, thigh is coming up. And now he's in this weird Kimura type position, right? So if you look at this, his hand's basically in this position and my thigh is here. So he can't get it out, right? This is really, like it's such a weak position, you don't even need much force to, to keep him here, right? This is really, like you could even try to go for a submission, but it's like, yeah, it's not really worthwhile, I think, but you can try it. Um, but the main, main point is that this thigh has to trap him here. If my thigh is here, he just swims out right away, right? But if I'm punching him, I'm punching him like this behind his back, my thigh comes up, now he's just, I don't know if you see this, but you probably don't see it, but it's hard to show. But, but I'm like here, my thigh is trapping him here. He can't really pull. Okay. And they work together really beautifully. Right? And he has to keep this hand. If he, doesn't, if he doesn't keep this hand, I punch through instantly. Right? So I force him to either keep this hand or I punch through. Right? This, is the, this is the choice I give him. Okay? So here, I either punch this down and come over the top and go here. I find this generally a little bit harder. First of all, they expect it, and you have to do this weird pull out the hand without losing his hand, right? It can be quite hard. So I'm actually happy if they, if they resist this, which they, which they usually do. I pull it up, you, like you want to be really nice. You um, accelerate his up, up pulling. So I'm pushing down, he's pulling up. I go with his pull and then punch it behind his back. And it's really weak. Once you're like up here with the arm, it's really easy to do this, right? It's such a weak angle. You, this is not a strong motion. You could probably guess, right? But you can try this out. It's a weak motion. So once it's up, it's easy to get it here. Again, we're here, he grabs my hand as he should with good defense, and I have this knuckle grip. Right? As we have in most, most of the time when we have back, back control, we have this grip here. This is always useful for, for many things. And here, we punch it down towards his near hip here, and then we want to come over and catch our own hand, basically. We move our hand, keep it here, lock it up, and now we have a tight control. Now we can use the second hand here, punch through, like it's really hard for him to, to win the fight at this point. Or alternatively, I'm here, I punch through, and he pulls up, I come up with him, punch him behind his back, and trap him with my thigh. Like my thigh is really high. You can even hug your own thigh, kind of like a Williams guard, like this. And now he tries to remove it, it's really hard. I still have pressure into him with this tough shoulder, right? So if I don't, if I'm too loose here, he just circles out, he's belly up, yeah, this could happen. Okay. So I'm still having the same thing we did before, and I have this top shoulder, pressure into him. Now if he tries to circle out, it's much harder, right? And then I can remove this, punch this through, Go to my finish, okay? And also, of course, it works the other way. If you prefer, you're here, you have your hand, you can pull him up, he punches down hard, so you're like, ah, I can't get him up, you punch him down, you with this direction, right? So you can go just up, down, up, down, up, down. Right? Just like, until he gets tired. Okay? And it's much more tiring for him, because he's like in a weird angle, has to do this. For you, it's like pretty strong, just doing this. Okay? Any questions, or want to see it again? Right, one, two. <laughs> <laughs> Joe has been <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that's all I can show for now. Um, if you're interested, come to the um, side mats and I'll show you more stuff. Um, just to, to reiterate, we basically did, just like my other two classes, we just did this one thing, right? I tried to really limit it because I always want to show so much. I tried to limit it and more or less everything we did is uh, go on this overhook side, how to control the overhook side, right? Be nice and tight and then how to get two finishes from here, right? Like two options where we go straight away or where, or actually three options where he has my arm, right? But my hands can still move. This is, you will find this a lot, right? Or they're really conscious and they're like, I grab this hand, right? The basic way is just strip it, punch back, like just play this for a while. Or if they're like better, you take this hand, punch it down, trap it, or pull it up, trap it, right? And there are other ways to stuff that you can do, but this is like already um, get, getting you really far. If you do it correctly and um, precisely, then you get really, really far with, with just this. And um, there's something I want to say, but I forgot. Just, someone asked a good question, I forgot. Okay, but that's, that's the main thing. And of course, we can play the other side too, which is really, really good side. And um, all the hooks, yeah. There was a question about the hooks, right? I didn't go too much into the hooks other than, than what, what I said. But of course, it's better usually to bring the leg over if you have long enough legs, right? To bring them over, you connect them here, go into body triangles. Body triangles are really, really good. We just didn't have time to, to, to look into this. But if you get a body triangle, it makes everything better. Right? It's just like, you know, just like your favorite meal or something. It makes everything better. You get the body triangle, it's like always beautiful. It makes you stretch much better too, like the stretching thing with the body triangles. You can actually submit people, even like decently strong people sometimes with this. And even if not, they just get super tired, they, they just suffer. It's horrible. Okay. Hope you had fun and thanks for coming. And uh, let's take a picture. <laughs>